A Meghan Markle supporter here on YouTube, Prince Dre the Duke, has labelled me a hate channel. Well, you're really going to enjoy this, Daily Nerd, because watch me destroy him with receipts. Hey up everyone, it's me, Steph the Alter Nerd, your nerdy alternative, and welcome to another dose of the Daily Nerd, where I break down the royal news and gossip of the day that's pretty much got me eye, and oh my goodness, yeah, let's jump into this madness, shall we, and start by saying, oh my goodness, it's a badge of honour to be labelled as one of the 26 hate channels uh, by uh, Prince Dre here amongst some of my other good friends such as, yes, Megan's Mole, the Royal Rogue, uh, according to Taz, and also as well, my big brother, Andy Signor, over on Popcorn Palace. And Andy actually, after he saw this video himself, got Prince Dre the Duke on his channel. And they actually had quite a healthy debate. Now, uh, as of the time of releasing this Daily Nerd, this video will be released. So do check it out because, um, yeah, Prince Dre, I work with Andy behind the scenes. And so I got an extra sneak peek of that video. And um, yeah, I was able to make some notes. So guys, watch me destroy Prince Dre the Duke with receipts. First and foremost, him turning around and saying that I'm a hate channel. Well, no, I'm not. Because I've actually done videos defending Megzi and or Hazza. But I suppose that doesn't jive with his narrative, does it? But as I said, I'm going to destroy him with receipts because uh, here we go, right? Uh, this was over a year ago when Hazard released Spare, and when he released his Unalive account, uh, when it came to when he was in Afghanistan at the time, I actually defended Megzi because I was like, look, actually, to me, Prince Hazard has done something wrong because not only has he put a target on his own back, but he's now put potentially a target on Megzi as well. That is totally unfair on Megzi, and he shouldn't have done that whatsoever. Uh, here's another one, right? where, again, I am defending Megzi here. Because guess what? I was right at that point. He did put a target not only on his back, but Megzi's as well, because, uh, yeah, the Taliban responded. That was not good. Not good whatsoever. Uh, only recently, a couple of months ago, right, there was this OnlyFans last, right, that was threatening to release illicit nude pictures of Hazza. And I turned around and I said, actually, that's wrong. And I defended both Hazza and Megzi. Because as far as I'm concerned, that is a form of revenge porn and should not take place whatsoever. And it wouldn't have only just affected uh, Hazza, but it would have affected Megzi and the children as well. So I defended them there. Oh, but wait, guys. Oh, I'm giving you even more receipts. Prince Dre the Duke. This is how it's done. Uh, here, um, around about the beginning of this year, there was a Silicon Valley bank collapse and a lot of people, okay, were gleeful saying, oh, Hazard and Megzi, uh, they're going to lose their millions now because they banked with this bank, this, that and the other. I wasn't being gleeful. I was the one every step of the way turning around and saying, no, actually, they are victims of a financial situation, financial victims, if that's the case. And if that's the case, then we shouldn't be gleeful. It's as simple as that. But wait, there's more. Uh, here, again, being very, very clear here in this video, I am defending Megzi here because TikTok was attacking Megzi for controlling Prince Hazard. But when I looked into it, I'm like, dude, there's, there's no control whatsoever there. Let's let's be real here. Calm your tits, right? Uh, but, oh, guys, he's turning around and saying that we're towing the line with very dangerous conspiracy theories. Well, if he's talking about the fake pregnancy theory, which, based on the conversation when you watch the video, that is what he's alluding to. Well, when you have pictures like these, okay, and uh, this, okay, and uh, this, 
and there's no solid explanation, then yeah, there is going to be a discussion about it. There has to be. Because if Archie and Lilibet are not born of the body, then they cannot actually be in the line of succession. So it is a very relevant and important discussion. And if anything, it's more dangerous not to discuss this. Now, I've never said that she's faked a pregnancy. I said that I'm on the fence with it. However, these pictures and so much more that is on the internet, to me, it's got me thinking, well, something's not right with this picture. Which, by the way, you can watch in this video I did right here. Oh, and uh, by the way, Prince Dre the Duke, these pictures are not grainy or edited. I mean, looking at the purple dress pictures alone, uh, this is actually from the Getty Images library. And in both here, you've got this one here, right? And you've got this one here, right? In both of them, you can see there is no note stating that these pictures were edited. And you can tell they are not grainy. They are clear as hell. Now, in Prince Dre's defense, okay, when discussing the uh, video of Megzi squatting down, there are other pregnant women who have been able to do that, right? I've seen a video of Princess Eugenie squatting down whilst pregnant. And as Healthline says here, uh, during pregnancy, squats are an excellent resistant exercise to maintain strength and range of motion in the hips, glutes, core and pelvic floor muscles. When performed correctly, squats can help improve posture and they have the potential to assist with the birthing process. Squats don't need to be performed with weight in order to be beneficial. If you have a healthy pregnancy, you can do them throughout. Always check with your doctor though before performing any new exercise routine during the pregnancy. Now, during the conversation, the debate with Andy Wright, at around about 5 minute 59 in the video, uh, Prince Dre the Duke says, he says uh, that the palace has leaked information about Megzi when it comes to a pregnancy, but offers no evidence at all to support his claim there. But don't worry, I'll continue to show Prince Dre how it's done. Because where you offer up an opinion and back it up with receipts, see, that's how it's done. So let's continue, shall we? Um, now, he says uh, that Megzi is not the only celebrity that has dealt with these kind of conspiracy theories when it comes to the fake pregnancy situation. And that they only happen with women of colour. Um... Uh, well, let's, let's, let, let, uh, Prince Straight, you, you might want to walk back on that statement. Now, he names Beyonce. And yes, there were rumours that she faked a pregnancy, right? However, those rumours were completely destroyed with this Instagram post to announce the pregnancy right here. You see the bump in all its glory and there's just no moon bump here whatsoever. So she shut down the rumours in the most elegant of ways, of course. Megzi has done nothing of the sort. Why? And this is why I'm now saying Prince Dre may want to kind of walk back on that statement because it isn't just women of colour that have actually been accused of faking their pregnancies. Uh, Christine Quinn here, uh, a couple of years ago, had to shut down sick rumours that she faked her pregnancy on Selling Sunset and used a surrogate after she was accused of setting unrealistic expectations for new mums. And, um, yeah, uh, Prince Dre, she's Caucasian. She's white. So, no, doesn't just happen with women of colour. But, of course, it ha then has to direct the whole conversation with Andy Wright into discussing her race. Now, Prince Dre says that there are only a few places where black Americans originate from in Africa, where most of the slave trade came from. Uh, and he says it came from West Africa and that common sense would be that she's from Nigeria. Quote, common sense would be that she's from Nigeria. Now, doing my research, I found this from history.com. What part of Africa did most enslaved people come from? And so here they explain uh, that enslaved people brought to the United States represented about 3.6% of the total number of Africans transported to the New World, or around 388,000 people, considerably less than the number transported to colonies in the Caribbean, including more than 1.2 million to Jamaica alone, or to Brazil, 4.8 million. 
Of those Africans who arrived in the United States, nearly half came from two regions. So we've got Senegambia, the area comprising the Senegal and the Gambia rivers, and the land between them, or today Senegal, Gambia, Guinea-Bissau, and Mali, and West Central Africa, including what is now Angola, uh, sorry, Angola, Congo, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and Gabon. The Gambia River running from the Atlantic into Africa was a key waterway for the slave trade at its height. About one out of every six West African enslaved people came from this area. In addition to the nearly 50% of the total number of enslaved Africans in the United States from these two regions, a considerable number of enslaved people had their origins in the West African nation of Ghana, as well as neighboring parts of the Windward Coast, now the Ivory Coast, Others originated in the Bight of Biafra. Hopefully I pronounced that right. If not, I apologize. And here we go with Nigeria now. After all those countries being named, now Nigeria is being mentioned. Saying including parts of present-day eastern Nigeria and Cameroon, an inlet of the Atlantic on Africa's western coast that was a hub of extensive slave dealing operations. Now, in the video with Andy, as far as I'm concerned, Prince Dre is trying to make out that the majority of the slave trade came from Nigeria. Well, based on my research that I found on history.com, no, that's not the case. If anything, based on my research, when it comes to Nigeria, it was a minority. And Megxit, as far as I'm concerned, has been quite liberal with the truth when it comes to her racial heritage. I mean, here she's saying that she's got Maltese me uh, heritage, right? Here, she's got an Irish connection, Irish ancestry. And here, she's got German roots. So, no, Prince Dre, based on my receipts, common sense does not dictate that she's from Nigeria at all. And then Andy then told Prince Dre that when Megzi was doing suits, she considered herself white, which at the time in Hollywood, he explains, was much easy. Now, Prince Dre disagrees. However, notice this Megzi article, uh, an article that Megzi actually wrote herself, okay? Uh, this was when she confirmed she was biracial back in December 2016. Now, just to be, be absolutely honest, I haven't found anything before December 2016, where she's outwardly confirmed her biracial heritage. Now, she joined the cast of Suits five years prior to that, in July 2011. So why did it take her so long to write an article to confirm that she was biracial? Now, Prince Dre states that Megzi was the reason Suits changed her character to biracial. Yeah, well, why didn't they do it immediately in the first season then? Uh, there was a Washington Post article, and I'll link it down below for you guys, where it says, quote, then at 29 years old, she auditioned for Suits. USA Network was looking for the girl who could play Rachel Zane, a firebrand in a pencil skirt, whom the show's protagonist would fall for. There was no ethnic descriptor attached to the role. Now, director Kevin Bray said, quote, the reality is that girl would have been played by Jennifer Aniston 10 years ago. So originally, the role of Rachel Zane was actually supposed to be Caucasian. It was supposed to be white. Now, Bray says uh, when Me uh, Meghan Markle auditioned that there was some discussion about what she was. They thought she was Latina, Mediterranean. He told others at the casting table that he could tell that she was biracial like himself. And then the article says, by the second season, Meghan Markle's character had a family history. Her father was a black attorney. So firstly, there was no ethnicity attached to the character initially. They thought Megzi was biracial, but with Latin Mediterranean descent. And they only made her absolutely biracial, the character itself, Rachel Zane, in season two, when they introduced her father as a black attorney. So, yeah, why didn't they make her biracial immediately in the first season? Now, Prince Dre denies Megzi has used other people to climb the social ladder and or to improve her career. Well, Prince Dre, 
Here's another receipt for you. Uh, so we have Gina Nelthorpe Cown. Uh, she was Megs' business advisor who co-founded uh, the Kruger Cown Talent Management Agency. And she wrote for the Mail on Sunday back in 2020, writing, quote, uh, when recently I found myself in the same room as her, she pretended not to notice, stage managing it so that Harry spoke to me instead. Megan has made a habit of moving on to better things. And I doubt that will ever change. So her old business advisor, who co-founded her own management agency, is literally saying, no, yeah, she does climb the social ladder to improve her career. Because she has made a habit of moving on to better things. And I doubt that will ever change. Now, Prince Dre then says that he has heard the internet saying she's a clout chaser, but asking for what clout? Oh, you had to ask that question, didn't you, Prince Dre? Oh, yeah. There's so many examples, mate, but I'm just going to give you just the one because, you know, I'm going to teach you here. Find receipts to back up what you're trying to claim, okay? So here we've got Millie McIntosh. Now, she's a well-known reality celebrity here in the UK, a very successful businesswoman as well. And Millie and Megan actually originally were friends. Um, and so she revealed um, that, yeah, they stayed in touch, uh, that Millie, through their friendship, uh, gave Megzi her little black book of favourite spots and contacts uh, whenever she visited the UK. UK. She said, quote, when she would come to London, she didn't know London very well or know that many people, adding that the two would go out for brunch or attend yoga classes together. Now, during a particular trip, uh, Megzi admitted that she had been messaging Prince Harry after the two were introduced by a friend, according to Millie McIntosh. And she says, quote, I didn't ask too much of it, didn't really think too much of it at the time. If only I had known. And so when news of Prince Hazard and Megzi's relationship broke in the press one month later, Millie decided to reach out to Megzi amid the intense media speculation and attention and said, I messaged her and just said, hey, hope you're okay, thinking of you. This was Megzi's response. Um, she claims that Megzi sent back a really abrupt response that was unlike any of our communication before. While she didn't disclose the message that she actually received from Megzi, Millie paraphrased the message, saying, it felt like she kind of told me to F off, basically. So this is the thing, Prince Dre. By being friends with Millie McIntosh, she got the clout of getting a little black book of all the favourite best places in London, being introduced to high society when it came to Millie McIntosh in London. And when she was done getting all that clout from Millie, she basically told her to F off. Now, Prince Dre also says to Andy that we talk about Megzi every single day. Every single day. Well, let's take a look at the last couple of weeks, shall we? Let's look, let's look at recent times, the last couple of weeks. Well, it was only yesterday I released this video and it had nothing to do with Megzi whatsoever and everything to do with my most recent trip to America to uh, attend uh, Andy's wedding. Yeah. Oh, but wait, there's more. Um, I'm not talking about Megzi here. I'm talking about Christopher Boozy. Uh, here, I'm talking about Prince Harry and the whole fight for his visa that's going on at the moment legally in the courts. Nothing to do with Megzi there. Same thing here. Same thing here. Same thing here. So, yeah, for Prince Dre to turn around and say that I talk about Megzi every single day. Uh, yeah, dude, that's not true. And I'm just pulling videos from the last couple of weeks there. This is recent. Now, he says, Prince Dre says that he does not toe the line in conspiracy theories. <coughs> Did Princess Catherine get a Brazilian butt lift? Is one of his most recent video titles. Oh, here's another one from two months ago. Princess Catherine's 
fake pregnancies and moon bump exposed. Oh, right. That's a new conspiracy theory. I've not heard that one before. Oh, and one of my favourites from his channel was Princess Catherine, the real yacht girl, and not Megzi. Stones in glass houses, mate. Stones in glass houses. Now, apparently, we cannot compare Hazard and Megzi's supporters, I call them Sugars or the Sussex Squad, to the royal family supporters, according to Prince Dre. Well, let's put it this way. I haven't seen any royal family supporters dish out death threats. However, when it comes to the Sugars, oh, yeah, um, I'm just giving you a couple here. Otherwise, I'd be here all day. And I did actually, I ran about three live streams last year exposing all the nasty DMs that I was getting at the time from the Sugars. Uh, but, yeah, uh, the new Bat Signal. Uh, here is Styly Epiphany saying, for real, we'll be throwing up the Bat Signal. Basically threatening to absolutely bash my head in uh, with a metal chair. Very nice, very nice. Uh, here we have Benelli Shongwe uh, saying, I want your ugly ass too. And there are the headstones there that can only indicate one thing, to be unalived. Yeah. And here is another wonderful threat uh, that I got from the Sugars. Here from Sweetie saying, don't be ITCH. You may stop to harass Megzi because I know you. And if I saw you anyway, I'm going to beat you and drink your blood. Stupid birch dumbass. Now, it's quite funny trying to call me stupid, but she can't spell B-I-T-C-H right. I mean, really, who's the stupid one there? But apparently my mother should be ashamed uh, to, uh, to bring you in this world. And I should pray I never see you because you will please let me to let you go. Mm. Yeah. But according to Prince Dre, we can't compare the Hazard and Megzi Sugars to the royal family supporters. Oh, no, we definitely can. Because I haven't seen any royal family supporters hand out death threats. But when it comes to the sugars, oof, a dime a dozen, a dime a dozen. Now, Prince Dre also then says that if you look at the beginning days of when Megzi and Hazza got together, you'll come out with a different perspective as to how Megzi had to deal with racism in the UK press. Well, really? Because, um, yeah. Back in 2016, here is an article uh, from The Express saying, His Majesty's Pleasure, Prince Harry secretly dating US TV star Meghan Markle. Prince Harry secretly dating a stunning US actress, model, and human rights campaigner. Where's the racism and misogyny there? Because generally speaking, whenever you criticize Megzi, there's two accusations that are then thrown back at you. You're misogynistic and you're racist. So yeah, where's the misogyny and racism there? Oh, here's another one. Harry's love is in London. Pictures those show that TV star girlfriend Meghan Markle is staying with the prince at Kensington Palace and wearing his baseball cap on a shopping trip. She's spotted after shopping trip to Whole Foods store on Kensington High Street. She wore a brown baseball cap that Harry often wears and her poppy was pinned to a lapel. She's staying with Harry at his Bijou uh, Kensington Palace home, Nottingham College, the clearest indication yet that their relationship is serious. Where's the racism and misogynistic uh, aspects there? Here's another one. Charming. Prince Hazard and Megzi spotted buying Christmas tree on low-key outing. Where's the racism and misogynist there? Uh, here we've got another one. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle travel to Norway to see the Northern Lights first holiday together. Yeah. Where's the racism and misogyny here? Oh, you think you've had enough with the receipts? Oh, I've got more. Inside the Jamaican wedding, where Prince Harry and Meghan struggled to stay out of the spotlight. Prince Harry was an usher at his best friend's wedding in Jamaica. Again, I may be a broken record here and a parrot at this point, but I'm asking for a friend here. Where's the racism and misogyny here? Meghan Markle cheers on Prince Harry at Polo. See the photos. The Suits actress applauded her royal boyfriend at the star-studded event. Where's the racism and misogyny here? And let's look at the final receipt. I mean, I've got many more and we'd be here for hours. 
But as Prince Harry rounded off his idyllic holiday in Zambia with Meghan Markle with a trip to the natural wonder of Victoria Falls. Fifth in line to the throne is said to be ending an African holiday in an idyllic destination. Couple have been in Botswana where they celebrated Meghan's 36th birthday. Pair shunned luxury in favour of fly camping and are said to be at Victoria Falls. Again, where's the racism and misogyny here? This is the thing, right? Making out the all Megzi had to deal with in the beginning days when she got together with Haza was harassment, racism, misogyny is absolutely untrue and false. Where's the racist A-B-U-S-I-V-E system again? I don't know. I don't know. Because I didn't see it. Did you? I've shown you the receipts. But again, Prince Dre and Megzi's supporters, the Sugars, the Sussex squad, would like you to believe that at the beginning, she had to deal with it right from start. All the racism, all the misogyny, all the harassment. Oh, poor Megzi, she had it hard, blah, blah, blah. No, she didn't. It's absolutely insane, the narrative that they're trying to spin here. So, going back to it all, with uh, Prince Dre turning around and saying, um, hmm, yeah, I'm a hit channel. That all I do is speak about Megzi every single day and the rest of the accusations uh, that he leveled when he was speaking to Andy earlier on on Popcorn Palace. Yeah. Have you just enjoyed watching me destroy this Meghan Markle supporter with receipts? Because I guess what? I enjoyed making this video, destroying this Meghan Markle supporter with receipts. And if you like this and you want more, believe me, of course there's going to be more, then make sure you subscribe to join our alternate tribe because I'll be honest with you, help us now get to a million so we can also get that gold play button right there and hopefully cause a Meghan Markle meltdown on Instagram. Like, share, comment down below your opinion, conspiracy theories, whatever. Also as well, if you've got some very strong opinions about everything that I've just discussed, and I bet you do, then make sure you send me a super thanks. It's just below this video right here. We can have a conversation about this because it does guarantee a response from me. And until the next time, you guys, laters.